Yeah, good morning. This is Stuart this is Lynn. In as well with We're doing the Guest Community it's League today. Just like we saw in both the women's and, and the men's. Looks like we have the community so live so that can give us some commentary. Now, some updates. Uh, <coughs> there are some updates in the, the game that just dropped. Obviously, the drop shop is a big Let's one. Turn him off for a sec. Okay, so I'll have this community live running. Remember, he's commentating on the front of the race. I will not be in the front of the race. I'll be lucky if I'm in the top 100. So anyway, it should be fun. Innsbrucking, uh, four laps, painful. Jump into the pens for your race, boom, it's on. So that is going to open up all kinds of tactics because there's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more, uh, well, what's the word going to be there for the RNG? There's a lot more random numbers games, a lot more gamification, a lot more rolling of the dice. And it makes racers who do not have a power have to attack a lot more often heading into the final moments out, out on course. So I think that's going to really, really open up a lot of tactics because of this. Almost 400 racers jumping in. Let's get into things here as we do see up ahead as it is the orange numbers as usual. We're going to take a look at the start list here in just a moment and figure out who's all in this game. But first of all, we're going to have to move our way forward to find the front of this race. It does look like we have some crazy power numbers here right from the get-go at the start here. Obviously the usual 8 watts per kilogram, 9, 10 watts per kilogram. It does look like an orange bike on the front. I wouldn't be surprised if that is a BRT racer in the open slash what tends to be the men's race. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quickly as we head into the opening meters here. Hold on, of course, and it looks to be uh, Eladixia from Road King, actually. We'll keep an eye on this rider. Not super familiar, actually, with this recent uh, racing here, actually. We do have Ryan Ovias in there also as well. One of the strongest riders we've seen in the Kids Super League, as well as the Zwift All-Stars rider. Moving forward, though. Now, Avalice to ride, though, in the community league, will be riding for CCC, Canyon CCC, the recently launched uh, elite slash semi-professional team for Zwift Racing specifically. Leading things out, though, from the get-go, will be classic here. Now at 160 beats per minute rear. Now pulling to the front there. It does look like we've got Pritchard here. Chris Pritchard most likely streaming live right now, right from the Oahu Cycling Hub. We're watching out for him. Wonder if he's gonna be able to hang on in this uh, race here over the top of the leg snap. Obviously, each lap that is going to be the crucial point out on course. Leg snapper without any kind of sprint though that they're going to be battling for any podiums on. Obviously, the Kids Super League, we did see the sprints as something that were highly contested. Uh, it looks like today, though, obviously, it's not going to be all about the sprint competition. It's going to be all about the W out for the day, and the leg snapper is the place that's going to make that happen. Interesting to see all of the new uh, drop shop. Uh, the drop shop did open up maybe for some of these riders. This is going to be a setup for Swiftcraft. Uh, New thing that we're going to start seeing a lot more with Swift Craft, as I, I think we're going to start calling it. Um, we'll do a show tomorrow, I believe, with Greg Leo about some of the latest updates, and uh, we'll be talking a lot about the new, uh, the new shop, how it might open up new Swift Craft ideas. What are the best setups for each one of the riders? How riders are going to start trying to manipulate for the fastest setup find out there, and how they're going to be looking to get as many drops as they possibly can. Those of you who are familiar with what the drop shop is all about, the newly released drop shop, you gain drops in game by through sweat, essentially through out there and sweating, you're out there putting the work out on Swift, and uh, as you do, you collect more and more drops. Those drops can be spent in the new drop shop in order to get here. And uh, they did they did open up what used to be only available. One of the highlights of that will be that it did open up the Cervelo excuse me, the zip old disc 808, as you do see on the rider here in front of us. So, uh, you know, I think that most definitely is going to be one of the wheels that everybody's going to be looking for. And I am not used to seeing this many zip 808s old disc in the uh, in the races. So I have a feeling that some of these racers are have already taken advantage of that new uh, update and have jumped on to those old disc 808s. And we're getting a little bit... Uh, getting a little bit of chatter about that over in the Twitch channel as well as the YouTube. It looks like we're going to have to let go of the Facebook post. Sorry, you guys. It looks like for some odd reason it is not going to uh, be updated for us. I'll, 
try and work on it without me uh, during some of the more chill points of the race. We might be able to take a look at it here in just a moment uh, while we wait for the first time over the lake snap. But looking through some of the ladies that have showed up on the day, we've got 43 in the pack here. Kubak there toward the front end, one of these Rift All-Stars here making her way to the front. Looks like as well as Vicky Whitelaw riding for the outsiders. We do see Reed here from the KRT team as well. KRT super dominant so far in this community league. And uh, I've been watching out for them to try and take down the W here today. We did uh, see a huge contingent of the KRT team in both of the first two Races. So I'd be watching out for them on that leg step to follow things up. Looks like Rachel Elliott should make a showing again out here today. Reed's there as well. We're seeing C. Scott from the Sons of the Sun R as well. Oh, Brewer there from Fearless though. Fearless very, very involved though today. Team Fearless, the women's team, uh, looks to have quite a few of those yellow jerseys out there. One, two, three. Lelou's out there as well as Brewer. I believe we may also be seeing uh, Brewer, Lelou, and one other rider I'm not quite able to catch the name of there. But uh, watch out for Team Fearless to try and perhaps uh, take a few points in the community league here as I think they're looking to maybe try and take down their team. Canyon's out there as well. We're seeing Falk. As you can see, the Canyon ZCC team as well as the Denning out there for Vision. We'll see if Denning is a climber. Maybe be able to hang out over the top of that leg snap to get some of these top tier women here. But Kubok and Hansen for Innovation up toward the front. They did break away in the first week of the East Community League. I'd be watching out for them to maybe try and make something happen over the top of this first climb over the leg snapper. Uh, back in with the open slash men's racing here, we still have plenty of riders in this lead group. We can get an idea of where things have broken apart in just a moment here amongst them as it looks like we have at least 100 riders that have made this lead group right now. Diner from Canyon there as well. Looks like Canyon's shown up with quite a few of their top riders. Alex West is out there. The Austin's as well out there as well. We did see Philip Diner. We've seen a lot of posts actually from the new Canyon uh, ZCC team, definitely show them a follow out on the socials as they're chatting a lot, putting a lot of posts out there about the newly formed team. And it's really cool to see Canyon stepping up and making some of the first moves into this esports world amongst the community. A lot of the esports that we do see out there that have developed, you know, CSGO, uh, Dota, as well as League of Legends, they all started as community things first and foremost. The biggest prize pool out there currently with Dota International was a community prize pool up, up first and foremost up front and slowly developed out from there to be one of the biggest esports of all time. So, you know, seeing Canyon step up as a supporter of this community growth uh, and seeing the, this team supported the way they are to bring its own cyclists, their, its own professionals up through the ranks. Um, in a grassroots type way is really cool to see Canyon get behind that and uh, soon we'll see the mixture of that community. I think we already do see the mixture of that community actually with the All-Stars and the Zwift Academy Dream Team mixing it up with the pros that are racing properly out on the road right now. Speaking of pros out on the road, Dan Fleeman from Big Deep Coaching, one of the ex-pros who's now taking up Zwift Racing a whole lot now from the comfort of his living room, it looks like. And Big Deep Coaching now trying to make an attack. Does have a two-second gap now. Dempster there as well from Draft, following it up very closely. Does have a solid sprint. West here, one of the uh, winningest community members out in the world of Zwift here coming from New Zealand. Be trying to hang on, it looks like, the Poison Dart. Dart, who did make things happen initially over the leg snapper, pushes up to 187. We'll see if they can bring him back here. Rich from ZWC closes him down quite. Pack now, all starts to come together behind him. Don't think he's going to be going much. Just yet as we look at this pack. We're trying to bring this back out. Oh, will be closed right on down. Right this, uh, right this brought back. But look at here. Just a little ways behind, we are seeing a little bit of a distance between Hutch, we'll uh, see Kiko here as well as Vickers. Vickers there leading the chase out there. Now the South will be the Vikings rider here in the blue and black. Coming out of Norway, closing things down. We're going to drag that uh, chase group there. Vision rider and model as well as Phillips there for the Indian team. Phillips is a solid sprinter still, uh, but it looks like maybe uh, messing up a little bit and trusting that this would all come back together and wasn't going anywhere. 
never, uh, you know, it's, it's usually not the best idea, though, to trust that it's going to be coming back in the poison dart. So, the attack's now up on the top of the leg snap before the women's side of things. Eklund and Whitelaw were the ones leading things up. Now it's going to be Hubach there as well for the front in the ex-Danish national team. I'm not sure if she repeated this past year. We do not have the official results out from Zwift just yet, but it looks like Alcnoff is going to be able to make this game. And without any of the bigger times that we saw in the first two weeks of racing, I have a feeling that we may see things stick together a little bit longer out here today. It may give a few more ladies some opportunity to try and take down the W here today, especially with the sprints. Megan Morgan here from the Canyon CC team making it as well as Eklund. So the Canyon CC team and Phelps, the two riders from Canyon CCC all involved in this initial break. This is a 10 second gap though. Back to the with the this team as well as Cole here from KRT. Jansen from KRT as well. Angle from the Z team off the back. Reed now too. So it looks like a little bit more of, uh, you know, a little bit higher power or maybe the leg snapper, maybe just being too much of a uh, full on one or two minute attack from the top there. So you've got those um, much punchier efforts here today over that leg snapper. Uh, the efforts that we saw on the, the last two uh, courses, I think, were a little bit longer on the climb, maybe a little bit more of a threshold effort, not quite as punchy. That's showing who does have the full on punchy field to max type efforts to throw down. And we're showing to be uh, holes here trying to chase things down for vision, but Hansen is close. There's Potty of Bear here, Newcolt is there as well. Looks like Kubok Elliott there. Uh, Rachel Elliott, obviously one of the strongest riders we've ever seen. I think the form is going to be coming along with Rachel Elliott as well. Perhaps this week we'll see if she can throw down for a W. She hasn't seen one in quite a while, but she's still able to take a ton, I believe, in the uh, Nat UK Nationals as well as I uh, believe the first week of the ACL. So Rachel Elliott again out here. Form coming along every week it looks like. Now we're looking at Moin Moin though as Rachel jumps up with her wheel. Now actually a Hero power up here. Who's been one of the Hellcats here? BRT. Momsen. Not so familiar with Momsen as of recently. And is this rider going to be one of the driving horses out here today? Somebody in chat just said this is. Let us know. But this BRT rider uh, might be a threat out there. But using up that arrow power up, perhaps not so much as uh, that a lot of times is a sign that there is not a whole lot left in the legs out here. So. Uh, we are seeing all the chat going on over at Twitch. I am also following up with the chat over on the YouTube. And uh, it does look like the Facebook has gone live. I am seeing the winningness. That is, that is a Rod Leach. That is a word. That is a word, <laughs> Rod. I've seen in, I've seen, I've heard that word plenty of times in commentary, Rod. All right. So it does look like we have gotten live over. I have no idea what happened there, but it does look like people are commenting, commenting. On the Facebook post, so that's telling us that the Facebook post is most definitely live, it looks like. So, Destiny is pushing the face. Aaron is saying that now, see, we, uh, we can see all of your chat. So, if you are on YouTube, as you can see, thanks a lot, Eric. If you are hanging out over on Twitch, we are here as well. We are seeing Nike TNT, and as you can see on Facebook, uh, Greg Leo, instead of being here on the broadcast, says that he is laying in bed drinking chicken at the moment, experiencing debilitating FOMO because he cannot show you all his beautiful hairspray this day. I'm not sure what his, uh, not, not exactly sure what his sponsor is for bedtime hairspray, but um, we'll have to wait and see what he has to let us know. Maybe he can show us a Facebook post on his story all about the hairspray and the chicken broth. But uh, everybody wish Greg Leo a um, get well as he is very sick with the food and just glad to see him hanging out in the chat right now. So back in with the men's race, it is fairly calm at this point. S. Neal has been on the attack a little bit here. He needs to make little jumps here and it's gone out to four seconds. But with such a large group behind here, uh, I believe, you know, this is going to be brought back on the leg snapper. Unless Messi can just continue to attack like this and then end up with enough of a gap that it doesn't matter so much. They still found so much power, used so much energy, that perhaps if you can hold the 8 5 program or more with the 20 second gap, it's maybe a TT up front as they head into their second half. Back in with the women's race, though, let's go ahead and see how things are happening as they make their way into their second half right now. 
face right now with the VRT rider. The VRT team, if you're not familiar with them, they do use that power tap kit. Uh, as you do see the VRT Hellcats and rider here, Momsen. And a lot of times they do jump into the Tron bike with the orange wheels, but uh, this fellow S5 seems to be just here with the Zip 808 support. Momsen now. It is going to be just a little bit behind here. Another rider here is going to be Hamilton. So VRT has shown up on the day to try and take the spots in this top. I believe we do have about nine, uh, looks like about 16 riders in this team. There's two of them being with the RT. They do have some matches to burn here, some riders to work with. And I can perhaps make some action slow down, but uh, it looks like Realist has it brought into this team group as well, too. We did have one fall off, but it was not Brewer. Uh, one other rider there from the Fearless team able to make this front group at this point when he's up but at least two of them have made the group now. When commentary is short just as much as the race, it makes me want to exit. I'm sorry about that, Chuck. Uh, the race that we were interested in. I appreciate the comment there. Uh, but uh, we're looking to hear, and we have quite a few comments coming on in to uh, the, coming on into the broadcast here. Uh, we've got a few more here. Yep, Mango, thanks a lot. I appreciate the comment there as well for uh, Greg, as I hope you with the men's race here though and um it, but it's a little bit calmer though a lot of times you have to have some uh, uh background chat here so you know, we'll try and work on it for you for sure but so moving forward here with dan freeman now 6.1 watts per kilogram and he's here now as well soren bay from denmark 150 bp uh jay white now from cryogen and it looks like dempster here now now trying to make Chase. So it looks like Messi Neo now um, at 545 with the solid break. Absolutely killing it now. 10 watts per kilogram. That is the leg snap in just a moment here. And is he going to be able to hold on to this? It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I mean, this is a brave attack. He's up to 188 beats per minute. Uh, I'm going to take a look here real quick to see where things are at when it comes to uh, the kind of power. Threshold type effort here. So I'm seeing uh, Adam Zimmerman is in the race here, but I haven't seen him out on the course as much just as of yet. It is still a huge group though at the front end of this race as I look through the power.com for a little bit of information. We do still have 67 riders here at the front end of this group, but uh, former US national champion, he is in there still riding for draft. It looks like he put about 4.7 watts per kilogram. Leandro though, 6.3. Average so far, and we are looks like about 16 minutes. That's an insane level of power at this point. There's only a three second gap, though, and there's maybe just a little bit too much effort being put out uh, so far. We're seeing 186 beats per minute so far for Leandro Messino to guard here off the field. And uh, looking at his uh, threshold heart rate, as far as what he usually hold for the duration of, uh, of the threshold type effort. So it's right about the 170, the 170s, the high 170s. So I have a feeling this might have been a little bit too much for Messimio to be able to hold on, you know, perhaps as they make their way through the final, uh, through the leg snapper and maybe on the other side of it. If there's any attacks or continuance here, this is an opportunity for the riders to really put Messimio maybe on the back foot. He's going to have to attack and pull on if he is doing just that. Dan Freeman on the front end of this action up to 185 feet per minute right now and 6, 700 watts. We did see him maybe with 15 to 12 watts per kilogram and uh, it's that gap here. Messamil sitting on at 10 watts per kilogram, able to hold on, it looks like, to the wheels of Dahan from Dutch Racing as well as Dempster. Will they be able to chase that down? I think that is going to be the case. I think they're even really trying to get somebody to instigate something to the pack. Uh, with the level of Alex West and it, as well as Dempster in there, and some confusion as well. You know, there, and then obviously the Poison Dart Broad, the one everybody's looking at out there. I believe what they're, they're going to need to do in this situation is send one or two off the front and try and catch him out, or at least get him involved in the attack alongside of them and then attack him over and over and over again. That is going to have to be here if they're going to try and drop them off. Diner does see that. It looks like he's in his ECC team. Up in that 180 beats per minute right now with a 500 watt back of German 
rider uh, absolutely <laughs> trying to counter. And it looks like only one second to go on that down. It would be very difficult on that section of the course to try and make anything happen. It's a valiant attack, but the kind of speeds that we are seeing out here are just not going to allow for it to go much anywhere. It does look like they're right from the new Cryogen team out here, making a little bit of power, but again, it's a fun
your top 11 that we're currently looking at and make way into lap number three. Luis Hubach, right? Innovation. Ricky Whitelaw's in there as well as Celia Hansen. So a few innovation riders there. We are seeing Kristen Falk, Falk riding for the DCC. We've got Catherine Buchel from the DCC. Laura Van Regenborg, though, and it is also going to be Natalie Eklund. So four, all four riders there from the Canyon ZCC team showing up and have made the lead group. So the ZCC with a lot of opportunity to place the jack to cat and mouse going in for the last two laps. Rachel Elliott, the solo KRT rider out there, but if anybody can get away, if the form is there, Rachel Elliott can TT away from the rest of these riders. The question is, does she have it after such a long break from the, uh, from the world of racing? We'll have to see if that can be a reality. Again, Jessica Hamilton, though, as well as one point from the BRT racing team. So that's the situation within the ladies racing to head into that back with men. For the front end of the group, now we can see riding uh, is in the eighth place currently. Philip Diner for the Canadian ZCC. Uh, the Canadian ZCC is definitely focusing in on this community league. And Diner looks like perhaps it's James Phillips as well. Uh, and Lionel will be awesome. Alex West. Four of the in DCC make this front group actually. So uh, all of the riders for Canyon now in both of the races making the front group. So they've obviously shown up to win in the community league. The first couple of weeks it's been a little bit, you know, touch and go for that team to try and grab those wins here. But we'll, we'll see if uh, all of the I think they've been trading a whole lot as well as communicating a lot more. They've been using their own personal Discord, uh, well, team Discord, in order to communicate for the races. And I have a feeling with the way they've shown up to race today in both of these races, making these new groups and the instigators as well as the in part, I have a feeling that they're showing up to try and take the W's as well as maybe even uh, a couple of voting spots that they can go if not the win of this day. So, at the front of this race here, uh, we did miss an attack here if we were a little, a little bit earlier. Apologies on that. It looks like women, as they headed into lap number three, Picked off the front here. Dicky Pochi has shown up to take this W here. Lee Clemens also riding for Cryogen. If not incorrect, take a look if, at, if he has that. Yes, he does have that in the name. So, Dicky Pochi, obviously, who he coaches for and works with on that side of the business, but riding for Team Cryogen in the game. He's averaged 6.0 watts per kilogram for the duration of the race so far. He's got this 15 second gap. This is a threat. We saw this in Kiss Super League. Uh, on this specific course in round number three, I believe it was, with uh, Team Riddle uh, going off. Woohoo! Into the top 200. With one lap to go. Now, with two laps to go, though, Dan Phoenix here, this is a brave attack. I have a feeling he's going to be wanting, really, really wanting, a few riders to bridge the gap up to him. Hopefully, I think I think he would be hoping for that to happen on the list. Try and hold off two laps straight out here on it this course is a huge ask, so we'll see if uh, he can instigate anything from the group. And uh, the thing is, is you know, with this group and looking at what their tactics are going to be, a team that does not want this to stay away and wants a heads-up sprint may just close it down together, put the work in together to try and close it down. It might be confident that it's just going to come back and not waste too much energy at this point. But if there is a team that wants to get involved in a breakaway, they may be sending a rider or two off the front with 9, 10 watts per kilogram. If you can't just sit, if you want to get involved in a breakaway, you cannot just sit on the front with 4 to 5 watts per kilogram in Zwift race. All that's going to happen is that the group is just going to slowly use their blob mechanics, <laughs> the, the blob mechanics that uh, a lot of the community does call it, about how fast the pack of the group does travel out on course, and uh, what's going to end up happening there is that the group is just going to slowly whittle away at that break. So if you want to get involved in the break and, and you <coughs> want to really see it establish itself and get away and increase its lead, you got to put a few riders in to work together with the other riders. Eventually, Freeman is going to tire out and not be able to hold on to this. Looking forward here at the front end of this group. The chase is going to be on to bring Freeman back. Freeman's able to hold down a solid 7, 7 to 8. And West here now up to 12 watts per kilogram. The question is, will West be able to break the rest of the riders around him? Going to over the top of the leg, snapping for the third time. Freeman now 7, 8 watts per kilogram. We'll see if he can bring that up a little bit. He might be in a little bit of a temperance 
on what he's putting out here, and perhaps that's all that's left. He will come over the top just ahead of West, and will this group split there now if they do grab onto the back end of this attack here? Interesting to see, as there's going to be innovation on the front there with Bramlin as well as Linty. Messinio going there as well. Nicole, uh, Devola is there for Belgium. It's going to be the BMC ATR team. Dempster from Drass, just a, just a little bit behind. But it is a three second gap now. Bramlin, big deep coaching uh, with Freeman. Innovation with Lindsay. That's a group of three, but these are two riders that can really make some. This Lindsay here from Innovation, he's got a solid TP. Bramlin's got an amazing power output there. And Freeman, obviously, is the one that put this breakdown and took the risk. This could work. Biogen, though, with Jay White, maybe not the move to go to the front there with 5 5 and pack right on back. That looked like perhaps a little bit of a accident maybe on the front there from, from the Jay White. Maybe he just knew it was coming back either way, uh, but a lot of times you don't realize the kind of speed you are putting into the front end of the group. A lot of times riders do just look at their watch and compare it to those who are ahead, but the judgment of how much speed you are taking to the front of the pack, that's what actually matters. The watch program matters to produce the speed. And it will give you an idea of how quickly you can close down the gap to somebody else that's up ahead. But when you start dealing with the pack dynamic, the speed of the pack, it has more to do with whether or not you're bringing speed to the front end of a pack that is that is increasing the speed of the pack overall. Every time that you do make your way to the front, your speed on the front end of that pack then gets given to everybody else. It kind of starts to compound as people come around you, especially in downhill situations like that. Without that physical feedback that we usually get in real life, you know what you're doing with the speed of the avatar. A lot of times, riders can accidentally close down gaps they did not mean to, especially in the tactical situation. I'm not sure that's what happened there, as um, they might have just been closing down either way. It looked like regardless of what the strategy team was doing there, it was most likely going to be said and done. It was a valiant attack on the start lap number three, but uh, it was closed down quickly up to the top of the leg snap. Why? Looked like Alex West as well as um, two other riders. I think it was Diner that was involved in that close down as well. Canyon there closing you know, Canyon on a leash. Now, speaking of Canyon, I did just notice that we also do have Steve Young in here. Steve Young absolutely demolishing the uh, national championship sprint this past week in the UK, taking down that win and most likely punching his ticket into the live final for the, you know, because that was a qualifying race this week, the only one that was a quali qualifying race that was the uh, UK National Championship uh, qualifier. So that was an amazing sprint for him this past week and taking on the win on the day. We'll have to see if he's able to repeat that. And we do see Crowdgen, though, showing up with Merrick here. Even that 8 watts per kilogram does get another gap here. And it looks like they are really putting their chips in the basket for a break like that. Merrick now following up that almost a counter attack, a similar attack that we saw in the game that we saw in the same spot as last time we were seeing Merrick. Three seconds, yeah, six watts per kilogram. That's what he's going to need to hold for a while. But the draft did not have it. It looks like Subra right here now from the draft with Lindsay now as well. Six watts per kilogram. They're doing the kind of thing you're talking about. They're just not really that interesting. or two or three or uh, teams get organized here. You may just have a sprint finish. But Cameron Jeffers here now coming from Wahoo Cycling Hub team makes his way to the front. Been fairly quiet up to this point. Hopefully we might start seeing these last lap attacks as we head into the final lap for the men's race here. Open slash men's race here. Who's going to take him out here as we do see? Front. Now innovation starting to make their way to the front here. He's there now it looks like as well. Innovation is definitely one of the threats here on the day. Back in with Lily Grace Clinton, though, as they are going to be starting the next time we're doing the top of the leg snap here. And it looks like it's going to be Eckler who's going to be integrating here with Daniel T. But Hanson from 
motivation right alongside Ham Hamilton. The instant really last, last lap as well. Really wants to break things apart, it looks like here on this leg snap for each lap. They're up in the 172, 173 feet per minute. That's the only posting on the wheel there, as you can see. Right in front of that rider will be Eklund. Then Boom Cold Fair as well. And he's still involved with all the riders. And now at the back of this pack, it's going to be Eklund there following closely. On the front, though, it looks like, was there a drop out there? Is that rider probably goes back? Oh, no, that's actually our game. <laughs> but uh, Hamilton, you know, the watch is going White Law now there at the front, it looks like. They're all keeping in, and Barry and all still with it. Nobody able to really break this pack apart just yet. Hamilton maybe fade climbing, actually, is what maybe the tactic is. As we did see a monstrous attack up into that eight behind Watson Jordan, but it looks like that was just to make sure that she didn't get dropped off from the top end of the legs after. But it doesn't look like it's playing out too well. We do see Rachel Elliott has fallen off base with the main group, so no TT in a way for her today. She is holding on to 11th place still. Just barely falling her way back here. It's going to be Hamilton from the PRT. And it looks like the eight climbing there just working out for her. Acting there with the I want the program to get there real quickly. I wasn't sure if that was an attack or not. Barry here now making sure she just grabbed it on. It looks like that's just to make sure that the attack is going to away from them. If they're going to start hiding the TT. They're finally back here in the next one. Hamilton finding herself at the front end again. That eight climbing way back to that pack. Keep up. And more and more pulling things down. As this pack starts to settle down on the downhill, 1.8 watts per kilogram or so. Looks like this might be ended up in a sprint situation again unless we see a last lap back here from any of the riders. Rachel Elliott, 5.6 watts per program, only 8 seconds back. Any rider can close this down and bring back a group like the one up ahead. It will be Rachel Elliott. Everybody go ahead and log in. Give this legend of a rider a ride on as she's out here for the ART team here. The director sports team for the women's side of the ASL All-Stars too. Uh, out here showing that she's got something to do. For the wattage out on her bike for today. So, if you blocked in, White Law toward the front, starting to take over a little bit. Now, it calms things down actually. It looks like Eklund here now. 3.5 watts per minute. Everybody's thinking about going into half. So, back in with the Cryogen team. Again, instigating with, we did see White with a little bit of attack there just a moment ago. And get a Tiny gap sitting in second place here right now, as you can see. I believe I saw a moment ago Fleeman off the front, but I wonder if there was perhaps some sort of a network situation there for a second. But no, here's Fleeman actually, 4.2 watts per minute. So uh, it looks like all back together, but Biogen has been trying every move that they could so far to try and break this apart. But look at this pack. I mean, this is. Um, this is a serious pack to deal with if you're coming into a sprint situation. And it is a big risk having this many riders involved in the final sprint. So they're going to want to try and break things apart. I have a feeling we're going to see the likes of the All-Stars. The uh, ZCC Canyon team, I think, is going to be out there. It looks like Cryogen's got plenty of firepower out there today. Draft, I have a feeling, is going to be out there mainly on the follow rather than the instigation. Storm Bay, watch out for the ECT rider there, Fusion ECT rider, who does also have a serious sprint, maybe one to be watching out for as well. So let's start hearing your predictions as we head into the final time on the leg snapper for the men's side of things. Uh, love to hear them as uh, we are seeing all kinds of chatter actually over at the Facebook feed. If you can bring in your predictions, I will bring them on up. I'd love to hear who you think is going to take the W as uh, we head in to the final phase. Last time we were on the top of the leg snap. Also, how is it going to play out here? Love to hear from the community. How do you think it's going to work out? Uh, well, you guys can take up Greg's spot to broadcast out here today. <laughs> as uh, poor Greg Leo is sitting at home a little bit sick from Zoom just through we are seeing uh, a little bit of prediction here coming from Kitten, uh, Kitten Little Bits here over at the Twitch channel. And that he thinks on the men's side of things, West, which is a great prediction. West has been absolutely dominant lately, especially in sprint situations. We saw him just, just nipped at the line yesterday by Ian Bibby from Madison Genesis in the Super League by less than a thousandth of a second. It was like nine thousandth of, it was, it was some sort of crazy difference between them in the Kiss Super League yesterday. So that a, that, I think that's a great prediction there as we do see an attack here coming from another cryogen rider. 
it is going to be there. And again, off the front of those orange numbers as they head into the final time over the top of the leg snapper. We'll be heading back to your predictions in just a moment as we come up, as we come up over the top of the leg snapper for the final time. White here now in an interesting situation, 5-9 on the front. This is not going to help Merritt out one bit. This is only going to close things down for Merritt. White can, is going to need to throw down into orange numbers if you want to do something with this. This is not making things difficult either for anybody behind. Everybody behind here does get a solid draft at this point. You can hang out at about 2.2 watts for throw number so. So Cryogen may be trying to just make things difficult, but it doesn't look like it's going to do anything up to make the pack. Will he have a counter before we head into the proper time here? Cryogen now, it looks like, trying to make his way to the front. No, it's going to be Lindsay and Bromland here from Innovation. They've been serious instigators. Here comes a feather power up though from Dutch Racing on the front there. It's going to be Dehan now out of the Netherlands. And then Vyosin here has been very quiet so far. Vyosin here out of Belgium. Lying out for Canyon ZCC. Fallen Fleeman. There goes the Dutch Racing rider. Then Bromland. The Dor Poison Dart Frogs there as well from the 14 watt program. And if they do not want a sprint finish, they're going to have to make it happen now. The break is there. It's one second cap to Diavola that out of Belgium as well. And Young there following it up. Canyon, though, just going to follow the wheels because they're going to want to let their rider go up ahead. Boot the line of Vyasa to get in the break if they can and let the chips fall for the final sprint amongst that break. But it is Cryogen again on the front with the poison dart with the gap over three seconds immediately as he comes over the top of this mesa neo seven eight watts per kilogram fleeman trying to close it down this may be the race if he can hold on to this goes into 10 watts per kilogram again 600 watts coming from this rider now 196 feet per minute but it looks like brownland on the front here all they got to do is about seven watts per kilogram in rotation over and over again to bring that back i mean all you got to do but there is a reality as you sit in, you can save up at about four to five and then come to the front at seven. If they stay organized, they can work together against the poison guard here. Will they be able to make it happen? He's almost at max heart rate at this point. 1.9, he knows it's not going anywhere. Philip Diner here from Canyon closes it right on down. And that's kind of the workhorse actually for that team. Diner's got a serious TT, much more of a ruler out there. And I'd be watching out though now for Canyon because they're very set up with a lot of riders involved still in this break. Huge wash just getting thrown down over the top of that, uh, over the top of the infield break leg snap for the final time in the men's race. So, looking through some uh, more of the predictions here. Lots of them were coming in here. We'll get it. We've, we've got like three pages of predictions actually coming through. So, loving all of them here. Getting the bits here. Also coming through Eklund for the women's side of things. So, uh, we also see my man, it looks like Alex West, Oliver Peck over there. So Zim for the win. We're hearing from Alan Lowe. We're also seeing a couple of more here. Can you give us how many miles KS? We are into the final Ks, actually. Sorry we don't have a Ks across the screen there. We'll try and get that in there for you. Uh, the community stream is more often. Here's Rift Cycles lets you know that you need to be Canyon. Go Cam Jeff's here coming from Chris Bayless now. We're here in Young Looker. Lots of predictions here, loving them all. Let us know, you guys. Keep on coming, and we'll see if we're right in the end. Anybody who predicts the correct, anybody who predicts the correct racer, we'll make sure we'll highlight those who do. If we can get 12 pages of them here, they come on in. But as they do come in, we definitely want to watch the final K here, as we still have so many riders involved in this group. They were not able to break it apart. So much strength here. The Austin here goes from way out though. This is an attack from about a K to go at 186 B sprint. They caught everybody off guard. Vyosin here, amazing. Vyosin here out of Belgium for Canyon team. And the rest of the Canyon riders are just going to sit in and allow themselves to be pulled up to the line because they still got the Serpent. They still got... They still got Steve Young. They still got Alex West sitting in. So all Lionel has to do is push the pace. It's almost like a lead out to loosen up the legs of the other riders here. Cryogen looking to chase it down. 7.0 watts per kilogram. Dutch racing here, it looks like as well, on the front there. Three seconds is the difference there. This might be it here for Vyasin, but I don't know if he's going to be able to make it happen here because this is too much, it looks like, to hold on to. As he holds on to 7 watts per kilogram, the break is coming right on back as we head into the final 500 meters. Here come the arrow power-ups. The poison dart now making his way to the front with his. Here comes Alex West, though. 
That's the, predi the main prediction for most of them. But Zimmerman with 17 watts per kilogram. Adam Zimmerman looking for some revenge after losing this past week in the U.S. National Championship. He's looking to take down a win here today. It's been a while since we've seen Zimmerman grab the top spot on the podium. And Adam Zimmerman coming out of Colorado. Looks like he might be able to make it happen. But Alex West shows us why he's coming from the Zwift Academy Dream Team. But coming through at the last moment, Brandland barely snips it at the line innovation killing it it looks like it was cannon for a one two perhaps what an amazing sprint there from alex west but no brandlin kicks the last hundred meters in perfectly timed actually there coming from brandlin we'll have to wait and see what the official result will be with but amazing result all around we'll get the replay after the finish of the women's race here. Back in with the women's race though here as we have one to go. It looks like a lot of holding hands now between the riders here in the women's race actually. Let's go ahead and see also what the results are in just a moment here as uh, we head into the final time over the lake snap. It's going to be just a moment before they hit it so we can see what kind of predictions all of you had out there today. Lots of chatter here coming on through here. Alex Rybeck saying West. It was almost worth Did we have anybody say Brandon? And uh, we're seeing Darren Holmes. Nice prediction there coming from Darren Holmes. As uh, that was definitely what we ended up going down here. So Sam Brandon, go aliens. Coming from him. Nice tactic there coming from Brooks there. Sam Bike, West Young. Kyle Augustine is letting us know. Looks like. Sam Bike, believe it. We're hearing from it. Looks like. As well. Look like the pair two rider though. Elliot, we have to 
hang on all the way through that Three kilometers to go. Top 200 on the line. <laughs> I saw the arrow power up. I thought that it was all said and done because of this early attack. 
now you do see coming through Messi Neo leading things out. And I thought Messi Neo with the kind of punch that he has was going to make it happen. But Alex West, 13 watts of Pilgrim is going to see at the last moment. Kicks, but no, it was going to be Bramlin with 17 able to come through past Zimmerman. Zimmerman even gets overtaken, so it might have been a little bit too early there as he works his way backwards to the pack as Diner and West as well as Bramlin take over those top spots. So it is Canadian BCC with the second and third. Unable to take down Innovation, though, on the day. Amazing result there for all three of the riders, though. Canadian BCC still with two spots on the podium, but Innovation taking down the third spot. Now, Innovation, though, also it looks like in the women's side of things, amazing uh, result here for them as they made their way to the junior line. We'll have to see if I can bring in the replay for the ladies here. And here we go. This should be the final moment here. And here comes Seabot now across the line as she made an amazing attack uh, as well as it looks like Whitelaw there right behind her. 